I finished Daddy LaRue by V.E. Schwab. Um, it broke my heart into a million pieces and then I thanked it. <laughs> this was such a V.E. Schwab book. Like it's not even funny how clever and how fantastically written this book was. This is definitely one of those books where you're just so grateful that it exists at the same time that you do because the fact that I got to read a book like this, a book that speaks to me on so many levels and that I can relate to and that I see myself reflected on so many of the quotes and the and the scenes. It is such an honor to be able to read this book and to feel myself seen in a way, to know that I'm not the only one that feels these things and to know that I'm not alone. It's such an undescribable feeling. I know I'm supposed to be like talking very eloquently but all I can say is the invisible life of Addie LaRue is going to haunt me for the rest of my life in the best way possible. It was real, it was devastating, it was it made you think of your own life decisions and the things that you value most in life and it makes you appreciate so many things that you may have taken for granted the way that art is described and the way that Addie is so passionate over these things and the way that even after 300 years of living, you can still find so many beautiful things in life is so inspiring. It's insane to think that I can relate to a 300 year old girl, but the way that she feels, the way that it's just so raw and unfiltered is so beautiful and I will never stop talking about Addie LaRue. I really want you guys to give it a try, especially if you're like feeling existential, if you want someone to validate your emotions, your loneliness. This book is a companion for a very long life. It's a companion for rainy, lonely nights. Um, whenever you need a hug, whenever you need to lose yourself in a different world and remind yourself that there's so much beauty out there, maybe pick up Addie LaRue. I don't know. I mean, just a thought. Um, <laughs> I do have some pretty embarrassing footage of me literally seconds after I finished the last page. Um, it's very embarrassing, but it's also hilarious. That is the way that Addie made me feel, and I really wanted to share that with you guys because I'm nothing if not open about every single thing that probably things I shouldn't even share, but I do because that's just who I am. I love being overdramatic. I love feeling things too much, and I love sharing it with you guys. So without further ado, let's... um. Let's watch some footage that I'm pretty sure I'm going to um, be embarrassed by, but still, um, let's roll the tape. <laughs> I just don't think, you know what I mean, like, like when I turn this page, it's going to be acknowledgement and I'm not ready for that, you know what I mean, like, I'm not ready to see this page yet, uh, like, <laughs> What was the reason? You know, um, what was the reason? What was the reason? I, j I don't. Um, I'm blind. I do not see. Um, I do not hear. I do not speak. I do not think. We're doing good. We're doing great. I mean, fantastic. Um. Oh, 
um ciao anyway so look at the amount of annotations that i have if you saw my previous vlog then you've already seen a few of my addy larue annotations but by the time that i showed you those annotations i was only like halfway through so there is a lot of other annotations that you guys haven't seen i love this <laughs> so much like i want to put this on a pedestal and whenever somebody comes by my house or just like whenever somebody passes in front of me i'll just be like here read Addie LaRue. <laughs> I am so happy that I have three copies of this book and they're all gorgeous. I also wanted to show you a few other items that were inspired by Addie LaRue that I didn't get to show you last time because I forgot that they existed for like just a little bit. Um, but we have this lovely thermos that like keeps the heat inside and also keeps it cold. I believe. And on one side it says books she has found are a way to live a thousand lives or to find strength in a very long one. And on the other side we have the logo of the last word which is the bookshop that one of our main characters works in in the book. I actually haven't used it yet because I do have like my own thermos. Wow it's like the mom and the baby. <laughs> but I still haven't used it yet but it's very cute. I appreciate it. Um, the other item I actually have shown before in my vlogs, but I didn't mention that I was inspired by Addie LaRue, and it's this three-year journal where basically we have a little box of every day for three years, and at the end of the day I've just been writing like little reflections or like song of the day, reflection of the day, whatever, and I've been filling it in religiously. And the fact that it's inspired by one of my new favorite books of 2021, Nirvana. I feel like it's destiny, it's fate. Um, it's just so perfect how everything is fitting in seamlessly. I love it so much. We also got these two lovely pins. I never know where to put the pins. Like I don't have a pin holder. I don't, I don't, <gasps> Maybe I can put it in my jean jacket. Maybe I snapped. <laughs> this one is a stack of books with Addie's constellation of freckles that she has. She has like seven freckles and they look like a constellation. And this one says, a story is an idea wild as a weed. I swear, this book is filled with so many wonderful quotes. It's one of the most beautifully written books I've ever read. And the other item that now I appreciate a lot more now that I've read the book is this brass key. This one came in the PR box so thank you V.E. Schwab's publicist but if you know what this key opens comment it down below when I first opened it I was like oh a key cool but now I'm like oh the key <laughs> yeah so um last night was intense not only because I finished Addie LaRue or did it finish me <laughs> I also finished True Beauty which is the k-drama that I was watching with my best friend Ale we watched the last two episodes and I swear my heart was broken so terribly like the writers had no compassion for us um the the amount of pain devastation depression anxiety that I felt in these last two episodes. I mean, let's be honest, I've been feeling all of these things for the past like eight episodes. It's just been a whirlwind of emotions and the desperation, the depression. <laughs> it was so intense and it was so wild, but I think it's not like one of my favorite K-dramas of all time, but because I watched it with her, it's always going to hold like a very special place in my heart. And don't even get me started on the boys. These boys will forever live in my mind rent free, like no questions asked. Just stay as long as you want. <sighs> Please just think about them. I'm getting emotional again. I can't do this. Now that I finished Addie LaRue, I think it's only fair that I keep my promise to you guys and keep on trying out those tips that you guys sent in to get rid of a reading slump. Even though I'm not technically in a reading slump right now, amen, thank you Jesus, I think it would still be fun to try out those different methods. And the next one that I want to try is to read an audiobook. I haven't listened to an audiobook I feel like since August, which is insane. Like there was this one month where I listened to like six different audiobooks. Yeah. 
I don't know who she was, but she's not here anymore. <laughs> but I really want to get back into audiobooks because I remember how much I loved them and how convenient they are as well because you can't always carry around a physical book. So it's just nice, you know? I mean, instead of listening to the radio one day, you can listen to an audiobook and feed your brain instead of singing along to the same songs that you always listen to. So mixed in with the tip of listening to an audiobook, I'm also going to try and read a contemporary book. Um, I think I'm going to find a really cute contemporary on Scribd and I'll let you guys know. Right now I still don't have any idea which one I should listen to, but I just got back from work and I really want to like have something sweet. Um, I don't know if it's only me, but like after a long day, I just want to put on my PJs and just eat. <laughs> oh my god, welcome to this week's reading vlog. I can't believe I haven't said hi. Wait, okay, wait. <laughs> Hello my friends, it's Isabella and welcome to this week's reading vlog. This is hopefully going to be a very fun and exciting vlog to watch because I have a lot of little plans for us for this week. So how are you guys? How are you doing? I hope your day has been going well so far and if it hasn't, hopefully this vlog is going to bring you a little bit of happiness. I hope, I wish, I pray. Let me know what you're currently reading, if you have any contemporary recommendations. I'm a little out of the loop with contemporary books just because I've been like really into fantasy and like adventure action type of things. I've kind of left the contemporary genre aside, but I'm very excited to get back into it. So if you have any recommendations, do let me know down below. Of course, the comments are always open. My favorite part of uploading a video is the comments. And I'm gonna stop talking now because I want something sweet in my mouth right now. So I hope you're doing amazing. I really hope you enjoy this vlog. Um, and yes, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.
For some reason, I've just had so much fun editing this vlog, so I'm really hoping you guys are enjoying it. But now, let's let's do some updates, you know? <laughs> Grab your coffee or your beverage of choice and sit down, relax, and just hear me scream for the next, hopefully not very long minutes. So the first thing that I want to say is I finished season two of Attack on Titan. Oh my god, I can't believe what's going on. Like, I can't believe they would go this far. I mean, season three? Wow, I am so excited to see what's in store for us. Like, I'm just afraid. I don't know who's safe. I don't know who's in danger. Is everybody in danger? I can't wait to find out. I am loving Attack on Titan. But I also don't want to watch it that fast because I, I will not be able to survive having to wait every single week for a new episode. So I think I'm going to start a new anime. I don't know which one yet, but I will definitely keep you guys posted because my love for anything anime is coming back after being asleep or after hibernating for like five to six years. My manga wall or manga column is on display for the first time and she's gorgeous. Look at her. I also finished another K-drama. It's called Tale of the Nine-Tailed. I've been watching it since October 2020. Um, it's been a ride. There were definitely some episodes that I really loved where I was like really vibing with the story, with the characters, but as the story dragged on, literally I had to crawl my way through these episodes because they felt eternal. I just really couldn't connect with the characters and the one... <laughs> Like, I'm never going to get over how betrayed I feel. The one character that had so much potential, this character carried the K-drama on his back. And you know what they did to him? They killed him off in the last episode. What was the reason? I had a reason. What was the reason? What was the reason? And also, like, I just couldn't buy the love and the chemistry between the two main leads. Like, it, it just wasn't there for me. It was very promising, but it ended up being very lacking. I did DNF it. Like, when I reached episode 14, I was like, I can't do this anymore. But then I was like, it's only two more episodes. What could go wrong? They killed off the only character that I cared about. So after that whole K-drama fiasco, I wanted to start a new one that wasn't as intense, it wasn't as fantasy driven, it was more like contemporary, funny, lighthearted. So I started this one K-drama that's called 30 but 17 and it's about this girl, she's 17 years old, she has this car accident and she's in a coma for 13 years and when she wakes up she's 30 and she's like what the heck, what happened? happened to my 18th birthday, what happened to my 20th birthday. The way I'm describing it sounds a little bit intense, like not that lighthearted, but trust me, the way that these characters are just so funny, like so effortlessly funny and like it starts off intense, but the whole way through, I'm 10 episodes in, but each episode is like 30 minutes. It's not an hour and a half, like Tale of the Nine-Tailed. So it's like they go by really quickly and I'm just having so much fun in every episode. I'm laughing, I am feeling with them, I am connecting with them on another level. It's what you want from a K-drama. The other update that I have have for you guys is that I finished the audiobook. Oh my god, I didn't think that I was going to finish it this week. Like, I started it and I was like, I'm just gonna take this slow, I'm gonna see how I feel about it. Like, I'm not gonna stress over this. <laughs> 
Turns out, um, I basically just like laid down in my bed and listened to four hours straight of this book, just like looking at nothing <laughs> because I was so entranced by the story. I was so entertained. It was so funny. It was so addicting. It's like one of those easy, quick, lighthearted stories. It has the enemies to lovers trope, of course. It has the office romance trope. And it has that other trope that I don't like, I don't remember the name, but it's like one character is a sunshine and then the other one is like super hardcore, like don't mess with me. I hate every single one of you. And I, <laughs> like, it was so amazing. No, I don't think you understand. I'm obsessed. Their companies just merged and there's like a lot of rivalry and people just hate each other and he's like really sulky and she is a sunshine literally like everybody loves her she's so nice and he hates that so they're always like playing different games to see which one cracks first and like their banter is so nice with that being said <laughs> i think i'm going to be giving this book three out of five stars and that's not bad at all like i really enjoyed my time as you can see i can't stop smiling because i had so much fun listening to this book but i did find a few things amiss, a little problematic sprinkled all over the plot. Our main lead, the female, the narrator, she objectified the main lead, the male lead a lot. I know that was like a whole thing, like at the end she's like, oh maybe I'm overdoing it. And he even talks about how he's insecure because some women have been like, oh I only like you for your body. And then after she hears that she's like, oh... I like you for your body. <laughs> I didn't 100% agree with some of the things that happened in this book, but that doesn't take away from my enjoyment and my utter addiction to this story. It's like one of those stories where you just start and you have no idea how much fun you're going to have and just how hilarious of a time you're going to spend with these characters. And it was so funny. And again, I was reminded of how convenient it is to read audiobooks because as I was making my manga wall, I was just listening to my audiobook. Like instead of blasting some BTS or some Stray Kids, I put on the hating game and had the time of my life. If you guys have any other recommendations for like those types of books, I am open to them. I really want to keep reading more books like these because they're just so fun. And they remind me how fun reading can be. Like it doesn't always have to be about death and having to save the world or, you know, like really intense stuff. It can also be like stupid office romances and enemies to lovers, which is insanely addicting. I don't know if I'm going to start another book today. Right now, I just want to drink my coffee and watch more episodes of 30 But 17. I hope you guys have been enjoying this vlog. I am having so much fun. Um, so I hope hope that kind of like translate through the screen so I hope you're having a lovely day so far whenever you're seeing this and I will talk to you guys later bye
Hey, Jimmy, you nice. Keep going.